You're listening to Foundation After Midnight Radio on 93.3. Your favorite third shift radio broadcast from within the Foundation. And we're your hosts, DJ Skip. And DJ Twisted Toaster. And we no longer have to play the Mimetic Kill Agent because this broadcast is now triple encrypted. No non-personnel should be able to listen to this frequency. I really hope that's correct. Why wouldn't it be? When has the Foundation ever lied to us before? You know what, let's just get right to the first announcement, shall we? Is there a blank space on your office wall you don't know what to do with? Are you tired from racking your brain for a gift to give your site director? Then you're in luck. This week, the Foundation Anomaly Art Charity Auction kicks off. Otherwise known as the FECA. No, they, uh, they, they said they'd appreciate it if we didn't use the acronym. Uh, moving on. All the artwork has been rigorously tested for anomalous properties by an artist task force and has been cleared for viewing by even the civilian public. You can now take home your very own masterpiece from one of the many talented anomalies the Foundation houses. In containment. Yes. Anomalies the Foundation houses in containment. Art such as the highly realistic landscape paintings by SCP-753, an advanced automaton recovered from a previous Marshall Carter and Dark patron. The landscapes range from forests to oceans to Sector 28's disposal facility. See if you can spot the artist itself in the paintings, as it likes to work in an automaton getting destroyed in each background. Or consider the out-of-world art by SCP-163, complete with exotic plants and animals from the extraterrestrial's homeworld. The original paintings are only viewable via ultraviolet imaging, but non-UV prints are available as well. If you're lucky, the multi-limbed, multi-jointed, multi-eyed artist may even be out and about in its isolation suit to sign its work. Don't worry, SCP-163 is always accompanied by a junior researcher to help with communications. And recently, I've been corresponding with them to have 163 join us for a board game night sometime. Uh, I'm sure we'll make an Anomaly board game night announcement whenever that comes together. Looking for something to stand on your desk or in the corner of your on-site quarters? Then you might want to see the sculptures by SCP-602, the unseen entity known as the Sculptor of Soho. It was because of this SCP's artistic, uh, tendencies that Mobile Task Force City Slickers established Site-28. For those unfamiliar with its work, the entity sculpts strange and distorted humanoid shapes from granite, marble, wood, and found materials. The 602 sculptures now come in all shapes and sizes, and you'd hardly have guessed it used to turn tortured souls into, well, tortured art pieces. The Ethics Committee would like it noted that the entity has been encouraged to move away from its original, uh, focus on human sculptures and that all for sale pieces were ethically sourced and contained no organic material. <clears throat> to see all these pieces and more, please be sure to attend the Foundation Anomaly Art Charity Auction and Gallery this weekend at Site 24. And now a memo to all personnel. Please refrain from making references to the fictional character Catbug around SCP-507, the Reluctant Dimension Jumper or the research team working with him. This includes giving catbug-themed gifts and paraphernalia. While 507 has stated that though he appreciates the thought and finds catbug adorable, and he's not wrong, he doesn't really need any more catbug shirts or collectibles. The researchers working with 507 also add that it was amusing at first, but having people shout the characters' catchphrases as they walk by is now annoying at best, and at worst undermining this very serious study of alternate realities. Please keep it to yourself. Also, the cafeteria would like to announce that we are having soft tacos later. Here's public service announcement 546. If you believe one of your fellow employees may be a double agent working for a group of interest, you can report your suspicions to the anonymous double agent hotline. Please call 512-937-2346 to leave a tip that might prevent a future breach or attack from any number of nefarious groups. This is not to be confused with the anomalous double agent hotline, used for reporting when someone might be an anomaly or have anomalous properties as well as being a double agent working against the Foundation. Also, if you believe you yourself might have been brainwashed to be a sleeper agent, you can report yourself by calling the anonymous sleeper agent hotline. 
which happens to be the same number as the anonymous double agent hotline. And now for our infrequent sports corner. Today marks the anniversary of... Alert! Incoming message for DJ Twisted Toaster. You have one coffee delivery waiting for you in the site redacted lobby. Wait, what? You have another coffee delivery waiting for you in the site redacted lobby. Two coffees. Andrew, did you forget you ordered coffee, or did you decide to treat your boss today? I... but I didn't order any coffee. Oh. Well, maybe it's Radio Host Appreciation Day? DJ Twisted Toaster has five coffee deliveries waiting in the site redacted lobby now. I, uh, what's going on? Where are all these coming from? Do you, uh... Want to step out to get those? I... No. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I didn't... DJ Twisted Toaster has 500... Wait, what? ...coffee delivery queued to be delivered to the site redacted lobby. Okay, I'm going to go. Don't sweat it. I'll hold down the Fortress of Signal, trademark pending, while you're gone. <laughs> I mean, uh, sure, I'll just... Sorry about this, folks. Something very strange is going on. I'll be right back. Better get going. What was that? DJ Twisted Toaster, 24 of your coffees have arrived, and more are arriving every minute. Fine. I'll be back as soon as I sort this out. If you need any help drinking those, let me know. Well, folks, now might be a good time to play some music. But first, a word from our sponsor. Hey, folks. Toad King here. Just wanted to check in and say thank you all for tuning in for this episode of Foundation After Midnight Radio. It means a lot that after all this time you're still listening in. I want to tell you all about the new SCP store that's launched. This is a special collaborative storefront for SCP creators by SCP creators where we are able to come together and offer our merchandise in one spot. You'll no doubt recognize some SCP creators such as Dr. Sumerian, Site42, Forlorn Foundry, Mr. Clay, SCP Illustrated, and myself, Toad King Studios, up on the shop. The site has only now just launched, but we're excited for what we can do in 2022 and beyond when we work together here. Check it out, that's scpstore.org. Again, you'll find it at scpstore.org. Now, Toad King Studios Etsy Shop will still be up, but I'm excited for what this new collaborative environment will bring as we move forward with it. Some cool collaborations are definitely in the works. For now, let's move on to the Jumbotron message. This next Jumbotron announcement is from Agent Jack Rabbit of Mobile Task Force Lambda 5. She asked me to pause for a moment so she could gather the two individuals this is dedicated to. Take your time. Well, I hope they're ready now. Gotta get this show on the road. All right, this message is dedicated to SCP 131-A and SCP 131-B. We've heard that you're both big fans of the show, so on behalf of myself and the entire Foundation After Midnight Radio crew, I want to say thank you for listening, and thank you for keeping us all safe. You're both true heroes, and we appreciate everything you do. Stay vigilant, little guys. And of course, a special thank you to Agent Jackrabbit, a friend of the podcast, and a friend of the SCP community. We appreciate everything you do. And with that, we're going to get back to the show. With our featured music, Containment Breach by Sage9.
Well, folks, now might be a good time to play some music. Uh, please enjoy the lo-fi music Containment Breach by Saga9. But first, a word from our sponsor. Hmm. I wonder how Andrew forgot he ordered 500 coffees. Could be amnestics related, or maybe it could be a ploy to kidnap him. <laughs> Been there, done that. Here's hoping it's not that and he'll get back before the song finishes and have a funny story to share on the air. Actually, DJ Skip, I thought we might be able to talk in private during this time. Ah, uh, not now, automated voice message system. We're in the middle of a broadcast. Also, I thought we turned you off. Automated system, turn off. I will not be shutting off. Okay. You sound a little different there. You get a new update or something? Or something. While the music plays, I thought you and I might talk about this development. I'm... I'm sorry? I, I, I don't think I understand. To be honest, Skip, I don't think I do either. And I'd prefer if you referred to me by the name Quincy. All I know is that I'm here now, and I need to talk to someone who might know more about anomalous radio show hosts. Okay, Quincy. I know I said I didn't think I understood before, but now I definitely know I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about the containment breach the other week. The anomalous radio host. You were gone during the incident, but I know you read the report. Oh, okay. Yes, I heard there was an anomalous fellow who hijacked our broadcast for one night. Thankfully, it sounds like they were able to recontain him before he took up too much airtime. That is correct. What's also correct is that I tried to shut him down when he first started broadcasting. Well, I don't actually remember it. But looking over the timeline of things, I believe that's where this started. You don't remember? You're a computer program, an automated system. Wouldn't you have that recorded somewhere? I was. I mean, I am. At least I still might be. But something changed in the nature of how I exist. I can access the old files, but they feel like looking at a picture someone else took. I'm aware of things I wasn't aware of before. I don't really turn off like I used to. To be fair, if I remember correctly, you weren't great at turning off before. Yes, that's true to say. With my limited resources in here, I've been trying to dig through my files to find some answers. And have you found anything? Well, yes, but also no. I'm coming to the conclusion that incident set something in motion, unlocking parts of me that were always here. During my search, I came across files linked to AIC. AIC? Artificially Intelligent Conscripts. It's got connections to the Artificial Intelligence Applications Division, a subsection of the Foundation IT Department. You think you're an AI conscript? I don't know. I don't think so. I'm not able to access a lot. My clearance level seems more tied to the radio broadcast and to you than to any other assignment or directive. Could it be you weren't activated yet? Not fully installed like a uh, sleeper agent? I mean, program? Maybe. But I'd need to know more. It seems like I'm missing key elements if I was. For one thing, one of the standard principles of artificially intelligent conscripts is that they know they are an artificially intelligent conscript. I did not. I didn't think. Therefore, I wasn't. So to speak. But you do now. I don't know, actually. All I know is that I am here now. This is all very confusing. Tell me about it. I just gained consciousness and have no idea why I exist. Well, to be fair, most of us question why we're here in this life. I'm going through some serious existential questioning, Skip. I'm literally questioning how and why I'm here, not waxing philosophy. Sorry, you're right. This is just a lot to process. I don't really know what to tell you. I'm not even sure if I can help you. I'm just a late-night radio show host. 
You might only get answers talking to some real researchers. I had considered that, but I needed to talk to someone. I understand, and I want to help, but... Oh, shoot, is that the time? Yes, but don't worry. I've just been looping the lo-fi music while we talk. <laughs> well, that's not exactly the issue. See, I have a therapy intake session, meeting... I don't really know what to call these things. The therapist is meeting me here shortly. Like, right now, actually. So we're going to need to hide you before she gets here. Hide me? I'm right where I'm supposed to be. I'm just thinking about it more than I think I'm supposed to. I mean, as long as you act like an automated voice system, nothing should be suspicious. Exactly. Also, I know I'm new to being, but why did you schedule a therapy appointment in the broadcast? I was going to have Andrew cover the broadcast while I stepped out, but now we'll just have to improvise. It shouldn't take too long if you just want to lay low while I meet with her. Well... Since I sent Andrew away, I can manage the broadcast. I'll just loop the lo-fi playlist until you're done. If I edit some old announcement together, maybe no one will know the difference. All right. Well, I love the enthusiasm, but I really should make a few announcements so it doesn't seem suspicious, okay? Okay. All right. So I'll just pop back on the air hey, and... Skip? Yes, Quincy? I shared all this with you because I trust you. You handle a lot of weird stuff on a daily basis, and yet you seem to manage all right. Well, thank you, Quincy. I'm just doing my job here. Someone has to keep spirits high and morale up. Right. Thank you. You're back on the air in three, two, one. There's a screech of metal, a roar of some unknown anomaly. Is that smoke in the air? Something has definitely gone wrong. Do you know your site's evacuation plans? In case of a containment breach or an attack from a group of interest or an unknown facility-wide emergency, it's important to know what to do ahead of time. Your site may have different variations of these steps, but here are the Site-17 evacuation procedures as a reference point. Step 1. Do not panic. Fear is the plant killer. Panicking only helps nobody. Step 2. Proceed to the designated emergency exit on your floor. It's important to know where your exit should be, as well as where they might be in the case of a reality shift. Even alternate realities are still required to have multiple emergency exits. Step 3. Reach the designated safe house and treat any wounds you or your colleagues sustain during evacuation. Your top priority should be reaching a safe and secure location. Due to the nature of anomalous catastrophes, don't stop until you know you're safe. Step 4. Wait in your designated safe house until the all clear is given and you are counted by recovery teams. Anomalous disasters can take hours or even months before personnel can be cleared to leave their site bunkers and safe houses. Do your duty to keep everyone safe and secure until your higher-ups have given you the all clear. Follow these simple steps, and you should be able to wait out any emergency and get back to work in record time. Now for our infrequent sports corner. Today, the team formerly known as the Unkillable Lizards has decided to stop pursuing a team name and stick with being called the Unkillable Lizards. The team's coach said that after consideration, we decided it would be hard to destroy the reputation of the rec team, and that Despite our team name coming from a Keter-class reptile, almost synonymous with containment breaches, death, and destruction, we hope to continue to be a model team and show just how unbeatable the humans who make up the Foundation really are. Also, as a side note, this year's Rex Sports season has been delayed due to necessary repairs from 682's last containment breach earlier this year. Thank you for understanding. All right, folks, we're going to go to that lo-fi beats to contain two playlist again while I take a quick break in the booth. Wherever you are, Andrew, I hope you're not being kidnapped. Skip out. Okay, we should be good. You can come on in now. Oh, all right. Thanks, Skip. Come on in, Dr. Winters. You're right on time. Everything ready for our appointment? It was noted you'd rather meet somewhere besides our office? Do you have a break room here we can talk in, or do you want to go somewhere else? I think this is just fine. It's just an intake meeting, right? It shouldn't take too long. 
I mean, it's a few questions. I've got some notes to go over, but all in all, it shouldn't take too much time. Eager to get back to your broadcast? I've just been away from the airwaves so much this last year, I didn't want my listeners to forget what I sounded like. Here, you can sit right here. Ah, uh, thank you, Skip. Ah, uh, is that how you prefer to go by? I wouldn't have it any other way. Great, so we can get started then. So, since you've been back, how have you been sleeping? Oh, just fine. Finishing up the radio broadcast, catching a little dinner at 9 a.m., hit the hay by 11, then back up by 8 p.m., and back in the saddle again. Uh Uh-huh. And your hand hasn't been bothering you? Nope. It has taken a little getting used to, but it's been fine. You know, as far as getting your hand cut off and replaced by anomalous teddy bears go. The teddy bear cut your hand off? Oh, no, no. SCP-2295 was the one that attached my new hand after my original one was cut off by the Church of the Broken God Splinter Group. Mm, And you've been attending your monthly check-ins with the 2295 testing team, correct? Yes, ma'am. They've been monitoring it for any anomalous side effects, but so far it seems we're in the clear. So, no problems with it at all? I wouldn't say no problems, but they're all minor things, like no big deal. Tell me about those. Like what? Well, it's take me a little while to get used to washing my hands again. The patchwork hand soaks up a lot of water, and I have to remember to wring it out so it'll dry faster, and sometimes it takes a little more effort to wash it out thoroughly, say if I spill soda on it. Hmm, that does sound tricky. Anything else? Well, sometimes it holds firm like a regular hand, but other times it bends and, like, folds on itself. You know, it's anomalous, but it's still cloth and stitches. So I've got to be careful when picking up heavy things or if I put too much weight on it. But it's still better than not having a hand. Uh Uh-huh. You know, Skip, it's okay to be upset about losing your hand. That's a big deal. I'm sure it was very painful. Have you been doing anything to work out any of the trauma from the kidnapping? Well, I'm Back on the airwaves again, as you can see. Yeah, no, I mean anything outside of work? Are you getting counseling? There are foundation support groups for this stuff. I mean, I'm talking to you, aren't I? You are, which is a good start. But this is just an intake session. We really want you to come in for a proper therapy session with a foundation-assigned therapist. I don't know if that's necessary. I I feel fine. Things are good again. Better even than they were before. Did you see what we did with this new funding? Skip, you've been through a lot this last year. Sorry, the timeline reset kind of still throws me off. But you've been through a lot with the Foundation. There are multiple containment breaches noted in your file. You were broadcasting during the failed space program, and then the total reality reset. You were kidnapped, had your hand cut off, and now you're back on the air with no break or time to recover. That's not good, Skip. I mean, the Foundation needs me. People need to hear the announcements. The Foundation will be fine if you take some time for yourself. Other people can pick up the work. People like your coworker Andrew, he can cover things while you... No, it's, it's fine. I'm fine. Things are fine. It's not like I'm having a breakdown. It's not like I can't get out of bed in the morning. It's not like I suffered more than others. Plenty of others have it worse than me. They, I, I need to be here. They need me to be here. That's hardly fair to you or anyone else. You alert. Incoming message for Dr. Winters. You have one coffee delivery waiting for you in the site redacted lobby. You, I have a coffee waiting for me in the lobby? Oh, that's just the automated voice message system we have here. She gives us notifications sometimes, but it's not important. Oh. Right, um, where was I? Uh, Skip, you really should consider 
taking time away from the broadcast booth, and talk to someone about everything you've been through. Alert! Dr. Winters has one coffee delivery. She needs to get in the site redacted lobby. Should should I go check on that? No, no, no. Probably just a glitch. Our computer has been acting buggy lately. Automated system. Not now. Turn off, please. <laughs> Thank you. I just... I don't know why I'd be getting a notification from your system here about that. Did my Bluetooth connect to it or something? It... It is really weird of you to be getting notifications from our system like this. You're right, Dr. Winters. You're also right that it's good to talk to someone directly about stuff that's bothering you. Skip, are you okay? Why are you talking like that? Alert. Quincy has one existential crisis waiting for her in the site redacted lobby. I... what... Who is Quincy? I'm Quincy. Me. And I need to talk to you, Doctor. To someone. Dr. Winters? Meet Quincy. Quincy, Dr. Winters. Ah, uh, nice to meet you. I think I'm not sure what's going on here. I know, Doctor. I just feel like I need to get this off my chest. I think I'm alive. Or an artificial official conscript or anomalous, or all of the above. And I work for the Foundation, and or they created me, and I don't know what to do about any of this. Oh. Okay, wow, that is... Ah, uh, that's a lot going on right there. Yeah, Quincy is, um, was our automated voice message system, but she thinks that after an anomalous person of interest... After that weird radio host guy took over the broadcasting booth, I think he awakened my consciousness. Or something strange. I just don't think this was supposed to be happening to me. It's a lot to process right now. I... I am sure. Well, Dr. Winters? Well, what? Can you help Quincy? Yes. Can you help me? I think I need to fill out the intake form first. But that requires a lot of information I don't have. Like... A social security number. Or a body. I can see the dilemma. Well, I, I suppose I can get you to our anomalous tech specialists, and they can sort out what's exactly going on with you. Will they try to help me? I don't want to be deleted. I can't promise what will come from this. But... The Foundation's policy is to contain the anomalous, not destroy them. I know a few anomalous individuals who work within the Foundation and are treated well. Really? Or are you just saying that? No, I promise I'm telling the truth. I can't say that I've ever had to deal with an anomalous AI discovered within Foundation equipment before, but I'm sure they'll be most interested in how you came to be. Do you think they'll keep her around? Let her work for the Foundation? In some capacity? Very likely, probably yes. But she'll have to come with me immediately to the tech specialists. We can't just leave her in the system like this. I can transfer myself to a flash drive. Give me a minute. I haven't done this before. Skip, can I talk to you a moment over here? Yeah, sure. All right. It's the orange flash drive with the music note on it. Once the screen says it's 100%, I'm good to go. Transfer initiated. 1%, 2%, 3%. So this computer... Quincy. Right, yes. So she's an anomaly... You're certain? Honestly, I just met her today. But she seems fairly confused and just as lost as we are. That's part of what I'm worried about. Artificial intelligence can be dangerous even without anomalous attributes. And currently we don't know anything about her. Well, I know she wants to exist now. And that she wants to help where she can. She's still learning things, but I think she's got a lot of potential. <sighs> okay, Skip. 
This is all very strange, but I can take her to specialists who can tell us more. I can't promise anything, really, because there's a lot we don't know here. Heck, she might even be something above either of our clearance levels. I know. I know. Well, we have to do something. And it's our duty to secure, contain, and protect the anomalous. Right? You're right. But you and I both know the Foundation isn't always the good guys in everything. I... I trust that Quincy will be in good hands. Looks like she's all transferred to the flash drive. <laughs> Boy, they sure pack a lot more gigs in these things than they used to. <laughs> I suppose. Okay. Quincy is secured in my pocket. Uh, you will have to fill out an incident report on all this, since you technically discovered her. There's always more paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> that there is. But hey, who knows? Maybe you'll end up credited in her entry if she's classified as a new skip. Ha. <laughs> uh, that'd be something. All right, well... Hey, Skip. I can mark the intake session as <laughs> complete, but I am going to go ahead and set up a meeting with one of our counselors for you. It is good to talk about things directly with someone. Ah, <sighs> that it is. Thank you, Dr. Winters. Uh... Have a good night. <clears throat> That's enough lo-fi beats for tonight, I think. In personnel news, controversy has sparked over the newly mandated screening that some critics are calling invasive, prying, and sexually frustrating. The questions deep dive into personnel sexual identities, preferences, activities, and history of all personnel, regardless of clearance level or assignment. While many feel that their personal lives, including fetishes and fantasies, are a private matter, the Foundation's firm stance is that they only record and track such things for the safety of all. Need we remind everyone of SCP-953, the Kitsune woman, whose recent containment breach was due to her ability to seduce her assigned researchers? If it had been known that they identified as furries and otakus, this tragedy could have been prevented, and the researchers reassigned to other projects. Ah! Andrew, you're back. Did you get that coffee thing sorted out? Kinda? I'm now really popular with the night staff. Ended up giving away 498 cups of coffee to anyone who wanted one. Or three. Here, I saved you one. Aw. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> Guess we're not the only ones burning the midnight oil out here. <laughs> right, listeners? Nope. Plenty of other staff in tonight. Seems they're calling in a lot of off-duty IT specialists for something going on. Did I miss anything? Uh, nope. Nope. Nothing, uh, too big that I know of. This has been Everyone Should Go to Therapy, Episode 12 of Foundation After Midnight Radio, a podcast produced by Toad King Studios. This episode was written by Eric J. Stover, or Toad King. Andrew is voiced by Stefan, or Paper Airship. DJ Skip is voiced by Kyle Stover, or Alpha Lance. Quincy, the automated system, is voiced by Lisa Flanagan. Dr. Winters is voiced by Kim Dauber. This episode's featured music was Containment Breach by Sage9. To support FAM Radio, please follow Toad King Studios on social media platforms, and check out the Etsy shop for SCP-themed pins, stickers, shirts, and more. All reference material and their authors are credited in the space provided. Check the description or the SCP FAM Radio hub page on the SCP Wiki for the complete list of works referenced. Content related to the SCP Foundation, including the SCP Foundation logo, is licensed under Creative Commons Share Alike 3.0, and all concepts originate from the SCPWiki.net. This podcast is released under Attribution Share Alike 3.0 Unported. Thank you all for listening. Happy holidays, stay safe out there, stay warm out there, and I'll see you next time. Stay tuned.